Hey, my guest today is a local Southern Indiana artist and miniaturist. We'll ask her about exactly what that means. Uh, but you can see her work on Instagram and Facebook, and I'm going to encourage you to do so because it's really amazing. But my guest today is Donna Shaw from Mini Maple Studio. Donna, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Hey, so just right off the bat, what is Mini Maple Studio? How did it come about? And maybe throw in there for, for a bonus. What is a miniaturist? <laughs> okay. Miniaturist is my attempt to try to categorize what I do. <laughs> um, so basically, I do, I create and craft miniature dioramas and I sculpt miniature sculptures. And um, I, I think, I think the best phrase that I, I've landed on to describe what I do is I'm a visual storyteller yeah. and so um, I like I like to create scenes either from my own imagination or from books or from different inspiration and then try to recreate it visually and share it with others mm -hmm. um, kind of our motto at Mini Maple Studio is create beauty and share joy and so that's pretty much what motivates most of what I what I do you know or I try to and um, yeah and so I try to take photos and share them on Instagram and Facebook um, and uh, and then lately this interest in sculpting and crafting uh, has turned into more of a business so um Currently, the three main areas where I'm focusing are preserving memories, which is um, I take um, a limited number of commissions for personalized keepsakes uh, and memorial pieces for loved ones, um, and then uh, also cultivating joy. So I try to um, develop handmade gifts and, uh, and more recently, um, preparing DIY crafts for people to create their own beauty and share joy with others. Um, and then lastly, serving the community, which is um, kind of the, the bigger project that I've just started taking on with uh, the Mini Maples Literacy Project with the, uh, partnering with the Greater Clark School System. Yeah, and we're going to jump into that. I want to get some details from you on that. But where, where did this passion for, for creating beauty and sharing joy come from? Well, um, it's, <laughs> that's a great question. I, um, I, um, in 2015, uh, a couple of things happened around the same time. My daughter got really interested in American Girl dolls and uh, wanted to make a bakery and a few other things and uh, for to play with. And so I started YouTubing, how do you do miniatures? Uh, can you make them yourself? And it just turned into this, uh, I, maybe an obsession is an appropriate <laughs> word yeah. to use. <laughs> and so um, I started making so much of it that friends were asking to purchase it. So, um, so that, and uh, I opened an Etsy shop and we sold those, you know, to, to other families who uh, wanted those items. Um, around the same time though, I started having some chronic health issues that, um, um, are still ongoing. Uh, and this creating miniatures and playing with my daughter and, and gifting those things to other families as well became a way for me to focus on things that brought me joy and could help me be others focused as well. And, and um, yeah, so it's been kind of a coping mechanism, but also an opportunity to serve others yeah. um, and encourage them as well. So. Right. Well, and that's, you know, look, the first thing that I notice when I look at your stuff and the stuff that you put out and the stuff that you're trying to accomplish is there is a passion there. So it's, it's interesting for me to hear that there is, there is some, you know, you connection with your daughter, a connection to serving others and, and, you know, a little bit of coping mixed in because, you know, you look at your stuff and, you know, I don't, I don't play with dolls, you know, not anymore anyway, but I, I look <laughs> at, this stuff, you know, right? I look at this stuff that you're creating and I'm like, oh man, that's cool. I'd like to have a, you know, a little squirrel or a little bunny. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's great stuff. So let's, I want to ask you about the project. You describe yourself as a digital or as a, uh, a creative storyteller. Uh, I think that's a perfect description, but you're working on this literacy project to, to really in, encourage local school children, elementary school children to read. 
So tell us about the Literacy Project. Right. Um, so it actually started as a just a compulsion. I have a friend who um, is a library coordinator of the Greater Clark Elementary Schools, um, who also is passionate about reading and literacy. And um, you know, I was making these miniature scenes, and I just kept thinking of children's stories because those are so they tend to be so visual. That you know, uh, especially really good quality stories. You know, you are your imagine it sets your imagination going, and um, and so I just found myself wanting to recreate some of those things. So I reached out to her and said, "Hey, if I were to make a couple of dioramas that are." you know, um, based on children's books, would you have an interest in, you know, maybe putting them in your library for a while? And and she she actually had the idea to pair them with like a special collection of books that kids could see the dioramas and then grab a book, check it out, take it home and read it. And uh, we weren't sure if it was going to, you know, if kids were really going to respond to it or not. I knew my neighborhood, there's s several children in our neighborhood. And when they're playing in the neighborhood, you know, out on the out on the sidewalk, they'll see me sometimes sculpting and crafting, and they come in and want to see what it is. And so they were seeing me make these things. So I thought, well, if they enjoy it, I'm going to guess that there are other kids their age that would. And we have just been pleasantly surprised by how students have responded already. Mm -hmm. And um, so we currently have, is it two? I think we have two dioramas that have been going around to several schools. And um, and librarians have said, you know, kids have wanted to pick up the books and read them. They've asked to read the story to their class with the diorama next to them. I mean, it's just been, it's been so heartwarming to know um, that something so small to me seemed like such a small effort could encourage those students, which encouraged the librarian, which I would assume encouraged the teachers because engaged learners um, are <laughs> way more enjoyable to teach. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so, you know, I actually worked in a school uh, prior to needing to come home due to some health issues. And so, you know, I think about the teachers constantly um, in, in our community because they are carrying so much right now. And, um, and the students too, they've had, they've had unprecedented disruption and, um, and struggles and, and challenges that um, we can't even really fully imagine. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, providing a small gift of inspiration and encouragement to the teachers and to the students, it just seems like the right thing to do in this season. So um, we have a plan to, for the next school year, to have 10 dioramas um, one for each of the Greater Clark Elementary School libraries uh, built, and uh, hopefully we'll have a, we already have a collection of uh, books that are um, connected to those diorama themes. So some will be fiction, some will be nonfiction themes. So there's going to be historical theme dioramas. There's going to be um, science related dioramas. There's a couple of really great fiction books um, um, that we're going to be introducing to the students that I'm really excited about. And the authors actually are aware that we're using their books for the dioramas and have given us their full support and are excited to see children, you know, um, and learn, read their stories. And um, so, yeah, so we're really excited about that. And um, and so, you know, our hope is that there'll be new dioramas, new books, uh, bookmarks for all the students in the county. And, um, and then about every month, the rotation of the diorama and the special collection of books is going to go to a different school. So every month there's a new fresh um, display for students to, uh, to engage with. Right. And hopefully be inspired by. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, so much that you said in there that I, that I want to try and unpack if we have time. Uh, you know, you talked about kids, your neighbor kids peeking in the windows and watching you. I even <laughs> reached out to you and said, hey, do you have any video of you making some of these things? I, I would be thrilled. To, and I think people all over would would peek through digitally and, and watch you creating that stuff. So, um you, look, you just uh, you just placed your first diorama at, at Christian Academy of Indiana. I had yes. the uh, privilege and opportunity of, of helping partner with you on that. Um, 
tell tell us really quick can you describe that di diorama and i'm going to post some pictures of that so people can see it but describe it briefly to us and tell us a little bit about that one sure thing and thank you mike so much for uh your sponsorship of that diorama um kids are already really excited about it and um and i know the librarian was very thankful uh, so i decided to do a magic treehouse diorama for uh, christian academy of indiana and um and so basically, I mean, it's it's a scene, I guess you'll show a picture of it, where um, it's a large tree, and up in the tree is a, uh, a tree house that I built out of popsicle sticks and coffee stirs, and inside of it is just piles and piles of miniature books that, uh, that I made. And so um, along with the diorama, uh, the librarian had also requested that we um, uh, purchase two new Magic Tree House books. So the graphic novels are starting to come out, which children really love. And so um, we were able to do that. And then every student in the elementary school is also going to receive a free bookmark, which she told us when we uh, went to deliver the items was that they actually, uh, the students were asking for bookmarks because they needed to get more. <laughs> and so uh, it was just really good timing. Yeah. Well, the thing that I love about it is, you know, there's so much to love about it, but you really, you take a scene out of the book. The books are sitting right there next to the diorama. So the kids are taking those books, they're reading it. Now they have not just a, a sketch in the book, but a visual kind of 3D image of, of what that scene looks like. So I just love the encouragement of the kids. And like you said, the librarian said that they were excited about it. I know I spent quite a bit of time looking at it. And so I think it's an amazing project. Um, look, you're looking for partners in the community to help you fund these dioramas. Um, tell us about how local businesses can partner with you in that and maybe, you know, kind of that that win win scenario. Yes. Um so yes, we are looking currently looking for sponsors uh, to help cover the cost. Dioramas are not cheap to build because you also have to include a display case to preserve the uh, the miniatures. Um, and also, you know, part of the sponsorship was we we're wanting to actually add new books to the library circulation, and so um, and purchasing bookmarks. So. With all that being said, we have two sponsors already, the Greater Clark Educational Foundation and the Jeffersonville Public Art Council. Uh, Public Art Center is going to um, sponsor two of them. Um, and so, you know, we talked about what the schools are going to receive through the sponsorship. The sponsors themselves will be able to, um, not only will they be able to partner with us in encouraging um, teachers and students, um, but they'll also part of what we will do as a thank you is we'll have a promotional poster in each of the schools thanking our sponsors who will be helping cover the cost. Um, each of the books that are donated will have a sticker inside that will recognize the sponsor. Uh, the bookmarks will have sponsorship thank yous on the back as well. And, um, and then we'll also do a social media shout out for each sponsor where we, um, we can do a photo op and, uh, and post it on Facebook and Instagram and on our website as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, just as a, you know, as a sponsor and a, and a local business person, I, I just want to say, hey, to be able to go in and got to go in with you and, and see the diorama placement in the, in the Christian Academy library, talk to the librarian just the gratitude that that was there for being able to have that and her telling about how excited the kids were. Look, I mean, that that's a win in and of itself. And um, I know you, you had talked to me a little bit about, uh, you know, just what it means to you to be able to give back to, to the school. Can you talk a little bit about that vision and why, why this project was so important to you? Yeah. Um, you know, I think uh, I think I've mentioned earlier that I feel like mm, I, I think I'm thinking my mind and my heart are with the teachers uh, all the time during the week. And, you know, having having several friends who are teachers, just knowing that how much effort they are putting in to um, our children, the next generation. Um, and uh, I think that it's a responsibility as a community for us to do whatever we can do to support 
their efforts and to let them know that they are seen and appreciated. And even if we can't physically be in the building, we can do big and small things to encourage them and to help uh, inspire their students to, to, uh, to learn and to grow and, uh, and to really, um, yeah. So I hope that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Look, you know, it's been a tough couple of years for a lot of people in a lot of different ways, but uh, we've seen it, you know, teaching is a tough gig right now, constant movement and changing your home, your e-learning, the rules are changing, the, you know, we won't go political, but the politics are changing around teaching and, and teachers need our support now more than ever. And yes. so, you know, again, it's a small mini project, but it does seem to be making a great difference. And looking at the end of the day, if you can encourage a child to read, what, what better legacy than that? Absolutely. Because, I mean, encouraging curiosity and imagination is such a huge piece in learning yeah. when, you know, and, um, and it's been really interesting too, um, when kids see miniatures, well, and adults too, I've been surprised by how many of them want to go and create their own. Um, I've had um, I've had a, a kid actually call me on the phone <laughs> and she said, I'm reading a book about a lemonade stand and I want to ask you, how do you how do you make miniature lemonade, you know, pitchers and cups? And and I thought, wow, that's so amazing that, you know, um, just allowing myself to be inspired and to and to um, yeah, just be curious and create. Has, our, the younger generation is watching that yeah. and that gives them in a sense permission to be curious yeah. and this was like a fifth grader so I mean it wasn't even a young young student and um, I just that 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 was part of the inspiration for me to uh, you know to really go for it and try to impact you know we have over a thousand students in greater Clark schools that's a lot of families. That's a lot of our future generation and our community yeah. that we want them to be uh, inspired. We want them to love learning. We want them to be reading. We want them to be growing. And um, yeah, I want to give the community an opportunity to partner in that effort. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, Donna, the younger generation is watching and the, and the older generation is watching too. Your work is inspiring to me as well. And I know people uh, young and old are inspired by it. Tell, tell us where we can go find uh, Mini Maples online. Yes, uh, we have a website, uh, minimaplesstudio.com. You can also find us on Instagram and Facebook. Um, I try to post a few times a week. We have, um, and I'm actually sharing a process photos and hopefully videos, I'm working on that, uh, of the dioramas being built. And um, if you go to our website, you can actually see the 10 uh, themes and books that are going to be featured. Um, just go ahead and click on the top of the website. It says Literacy Project. If you click that, it will explain uh, in greater detail about what the project's going to look like. If you want to sponsor, um, what the cost of that and um, and yeah, and you can see also see the themes that are going to be featured. Yeah. yeah. She's Donna Shaw, Mini Maple Studios. Donna, I'm going to put links to your website and your socials uh, along with this video. Look, folks, go check out Mini Maple Studios online. You will be inspired. And I'm going to encourage businesses, go partner up with, with Donna on this literacy project. Uh, by my math, there's eight opportunities left. I imagine that these things are going to go very quickly. You can help get a diorama in a school to inspire the next generation, and you will build some goodwill along the way. Donna, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate it. Hey, if you'd like to have updates on Southern Indiana events, news, and real estate information you can use delivered directly to your email inbox, visit us at 812living.com backslash blog. That's 812living.com backslash blog and sign up for alerts.